Phil Brown here. So pleased you could join me again today as we continue our Look to Jesus series, as we are focusing on Easter, which is just next weekend. So that's awesome. Looking forward to celebrating the, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ at Easter. And I hope that you caught last week's message with Phil Strong on the Look to the Cross, where he read from Hebrews 12 verse 2 among other scriptures but fixing our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God and Phil explained that we have to see Jesus through the cross and that it's part of God's perfect plan and that his cross allows us to pick up our own cross. So if you haven't caught that yet, it um, be great to go and, and, and review that and, and look to the cross, look to Jesus through the cross. But what are we doing today? Well, I'm going to start by reading John chapter 20, starting at verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where we've put him. So today's message is about that empty tomb. You see, Mary Magdalene, she was going to the tomb because she was planning to anoint Jesus' body with spices because of dead bodies, they smell a little bit. Um, yet when she got there, the tomb was empty. And so what is the significance of the empty tomb to us? Well, it's simply this. It's that Jesus Christ is alive, that Jesus rose from the dead, and that's why the tomb was empty. And you see, this was foretold in the Old Testament. If we read Psalm 16 verse 9, it says, Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. So this psalm was a prophecy about Jesus. It was saying that he would not be abandoned in death, nor would his body rot, nor would his body decay because he was going to be raised to life again. So predicted in the scripture long before. And the significance of this is that Jesus died on the cross. I mean, he was the Messiah, the Son of God. He could have come and not died. Uh, but if he had not have died and rose again, then he wouldn't have defeated death. You see, by defeating death, um, we can have confidence in him. Confidence that Jesus defeated death. So therefore, we do not have to fear dying because if we are in him, he will defeat death for us as well. In fact, Job, Job's the earliest book in the Bible. It was written before Genesis. And in Job, Job predicts this too. He says in chapter 19, verse 25, Job says this amazing statement pointing to Jesus. I know that my Redeemer lives and at the end he will stand on earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh, I will see God. So here Job, written hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus, he's predicting that one, that his Redeemer lives, that Jesus lives, that Jesus has defeated death, and that because Jesus has been resurrected, we too will join in that final resurrection. Oh, this is just this awesome sub. Jesus Christ rose from the dead and we can have confidence in him. Well, what does Jesus say about his resurrection? Well, before he died, while he was still walking on, on earth, he, he hinted to it a few times. So it wasn't until after he rose again that the disciples really understood what he meant at the time. And if we go to John chapter 2, uh, reading from verse 13. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, 
and then others sitting at tables exchanging money. money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. And he scattered the coins of the money turner changes and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for my father's house will consume me. The Jews responded to him, what sign can you show to prove us your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken about was his body. So this little passage of scripture here, they're questioning Jesus' authority. Because if you look and see what Jesus did, well, it was a little bit strange. In fact, if I went to the local farmer's market and I made a whip and I started driving people out of there, I'd get arrested. Wouldn't I? Because I've got no authority to do this. But here these people, they were selling, they had turned the temple of God, the holy place, had turned it into a marketplace. And this place was for the worship of God. So Jesus, because of the zeal for his father's stuff, the zeal for the things of God, he was um, driving them out. And, and the people there said, well, what authority have you got? And he then points to his resurrection. He says, well, if you destroy this temple, and they thought they were talking about the, the physical temple, that big building, but he was talking about his body being a temple, that he would be raised three days later. So Jesus points to his um has won his authority, but also to his resurrection, which proves his authority. And look, this is chapter 2 of John. This is right at the start of his um, ministry that he is prophesying his death and resurrection. And what's the significance of that to us? Well, it's this, that Jesus has authority over death. He has authority over the grave. He has authority over illness. The disciples were so confident in Jesus' authority over illness that they prayed this in Acts 4.30. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. So I want to ask you now, is anyone out there listening sick? Are you sick? Well, if so, it's probably, or maybe you know somebody that's sick. Well, what I want you to do now is to pause the video, and if you're by yourself, I want you to pray over Jesus over it. But if you're with other people, there's real power in praying, healing, and declaring healing in the mighty name of Jesus over that illness. So yeah, pause the video now and gather together if you're with other people and pray healing for sickness, either for yourself or people you know. There's another time in the scripture where Jesus also points to his resurrection. And we find this account in Matthew. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So here he points to the story of Jonah. And I'm, I'm sure you've heard the story of Jonah, but I'll just summarize. Jonah was given a mission from God. He was said, go to the city of Nineveh and preach, uh, preach to them that uh, they turn from their wicked ways. And, and Jonah didn't like the people of Nineveh. He didn't want them to turn from their wicked ways. So he ran away, got on a boat, big storm, um, and, he, and he knew it was because God was punishing him from, for disobeying. So he told the other people, throw me overboard and the storm will stop. They threw him overboard, the storm stopped and he got swallowed by a whale. 
And he was in that whale for three days and three nights. Not sure how you tell time in a whale, but anyway, three days and three nights he was in this whale. And yet, in the midst of it, and I want to now look at Jonah chapter 2, verse 2. Um, Jonah says this, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead I called for help, and you listened to my cry. And you see, Jonah was as good as dead. I mean, you don't go in the belly of a whale and survive. It just doesn't happen. Um, he was as good as dead. Um, yet, God heard his cry and he commanded the whale to vomit him onto dry land. Onto dry land? How does a whale vomit someone onto dry land? It just, once again, a miraculous sign of God. And, and then after that, if you read the rest of the story, Jonah go, goes and does what God tells him to do. Gosh, he would have saved himself a, a lot of trouble if he'd done as God told him to at the start. And, and we should take heed of that too. If we feel God's calling us to do something, we shouldn't be like Jonah and, and take the long way round and learn the lesson. How about we should just do it, don't you think? Anyway, in his distress, Jonah called out for the Lord and the Lord answered to him. No matter what situation you are in, God is only ever a prayer away. And look, if there's something going on in your life and you're finding despair, it's like, oh gosh, I, it's just too big for me. I don't know what to do. Um, remember, God's only a prayer away. Or perhaps there's a time in your life where you are overwhelmed, yet God answered you. So I think now's another good time to pause the video and, and have a discussion with either talk about a time where you were in distress and God came to your rescue, where you were in despair, when you were in that belly of the whale, um, and God came to the rescue, or another time, or maybe you are in a situation now where you're in despair, and yet, um, and you're needing God's input, you're needing his wisdom, and you could talk and pray about that. So yeah, pause the video now, remember that um, God rescued Jonah from the belly, and God resurrected Jesus from the grave, and that's the power we're dealing with. So he's more than able to help you in that situation. Let's get back to the empty tomb. I'm going to go to Luke now. Luke 24 verse 1. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away, and when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood before them. In the fright, the woman down, bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said, why do you look for the living amongst the dead? So this is a, a similar story to what we started out with, but it's, it's what you call a variation in the Bible. So in the book of John, which we started with first, there's, there's only Mary goes to the tomb. But in, in the book of Luke, um, there's more than one woman. And the book of John doesn't recount this encounter with the angel, um, whereas the book of Luke does. Now, one doesn't make the other wrong. It's just a, a variation on the way the story's been transcribed in history through the various Gospels. Because as we know, the, the, the Word of God is the Word of God. It's truth. So there's truth in both accounts. But I just want to look at what this angel said. Um, he said, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? You see, Jesus was alive. They were going there expecting to find a dead, smelly body. It was Jesus was dead, but no, he was alive. And they were looking in the wrong place for Jesus. And once again, there's things in our life that we can consider dead. Um, the, God might have put hopes and dreams on your life. But as a younger person, you thought, oh gosh, I'm, I'm going to do that. Or God's calling me in to do that. And, and, and now that you've got a bit older, you think, well, actually, that's dead. That's dead. 
And I just want to encourage you that, hey, if God is calling you, if God is speaking to you, I just believe now, right now, that there's people out there that God will be speaking to thinking, well, you know that dream I put in your heart that you consider dead? Uh, it's not. He wants to breathe life into it. So once again, this is a great place to pause this video, talk with the people you're with, pray into the dreams that God has given you, things that you may consider dead, things you consider not possible anymore. God is saying it is possible. Why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? God wants to breathe life into your situation, breathe life into your circumstance, breathe life into the dreams that he's given you. So pause the video now, pray and discuss that amongst yourself. And finally, I want to talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I want to, want to go a little bit deeper of where, where Jesus, after he's been resurrected, does, reveals himself to um, some of his disciples. And I, this is found in the same chapter as we just looked at, Luke chapter 24. And it's a little bit of a lengthy passage, but it's starting at verse 13. Now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they, kept, they were kept from recognizing him. So these disciples then talk about what had happened with Jesus. So we'll skip to verse 25. Then he said to them, How foolish are you, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not this Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said and all the scriptures concerning himself. Now I'm going to skip a few more verses to verse 30. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and began to, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they were recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, were our hearts Burn, were not our hearts burning within us while, we, while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true! The Lord has risen and it has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what was happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them and when, when he broke bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Wow, this is an amazing story. A, a story about the empty tomb and a, a resurrected Jesus because he wasn't in the tomb, so he appeared as a resurrected before these two people. Now, and he revealed himself to these two disciples, but they didn't recognize him. And I'm just wondering how often in our life God does something for us, but we do not recognize it as being on him. And so that's just the importance of being thankful for God for all things and all circumstances and just keeping our eye out, being, being aware of the miracles we see every day, aware that God is actually working every single day um, in our lives. And, and so I'm being thankful to that and recognizing God's work in our life. But anyway, they initially didn't recognize it. Um, yeah. Yet, then they sat down and they had uh, communion together. They, he broke bread. And as he broke the bread, something clicked. They, they were oh my goodness, this is Jesus. They recognized him. And as they recognized him, he disappeared. This is a very odd story, is it? 
and they were so, wow, they, we've seen Jesus, he is alive. They were so excited. They ran back to Jerusalem, seven miles, that's about 11 k's. Now, if you're a fast runner, you could do it in an hour, but I'm a fast cyclist, I'm not a fast runner. It probably took them about an hour and a half worth of jogging to get all the way back to Jerusalem. But they were so excited that they, they ran back and they told the others. Um, but you see, Jesus had disappeared. And uh, what other question? Where was Jesus during this time? Anyway, they went back, they told the others, and as they told the others, after they told the others, Jesus appeared to them. So, so I've got a question, why, I mean, Jesus could have appeared to them in the road, and then he could have gone to Jerusalem and then appeared to those disciples in the room. Why did he choose to wait until these people came back and told them? Well, I believe this, I believe that as they recognized Jesus, as he broke the bread, that they started to carry him in their hearts, and they carried him in their hearts, back to Jerusalem. And then as they spoke to the other disciples, Jesus appeared to, again. Um, and likewise, we need to carry Jesus in our hearts. And you see, as these people testified to Jesus being alive and what he'd done, they um, it opened the way for Jesus to come back. See, the testimony of Jesus opens a way for the revelation of Jesus. And we can see that quite clearly here in the scripture, how Jesus appeared to the two, they carried him in his heart back to the other, started speaking to the others, and Jesus appeared to the whole lot. And likewise for us, as we carry Jesus into our situation, into our um workplaces, into our schools, into wherever it goes, as we testify to Jesus, as we, as we do things in the name of Jesus, that testimony opens a way for other people to get the revelation of who Jesus is. So yeah, really key part of that story is, is that... <laughs> So yeah, the testimony of these two enabled Jesus to be revealed to the others and they were all able to say, yes, Jesus is alive. Which gets us back to the, the point of today's message, which is the empty tomb. They went, they found an empty tomb. They were expecting it to, uh, a dead body to be there, but Jesus is alive. And because Jesus is alive, we can have confidence that he has defeated death. He has defeated illness. And so I just want to pray for you now. Lord, we th I thank you for everyone watching and I just pray that they would get a revelation of the empty tomb, a revelation that Jesus Christ is alive. Lord, I pray your healing touch over anyone that's sick. I pray people in despair, not knowing where to turn, they would get the wisdom of God, that in their despair you would rescue them from it. And Lord, we thank you that you died on the cross and that you rose again. Pray your every blessing um, over us. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, amen. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to comment below or send the church a private message. Um, and please subscribe.